thank you Ahil for joining please tell me if you can get me loud and clear as you wait for others to join in this particular podcast today Pekuya Hill, I can see you. Shalom. My old friend from high school. you can be able to see me clearly. Simbi, thank you. You can tell me where you're watching from. My campus friend and colleague teacher. Daniel Makakov, thank you for joining us. Mwalimu Henry Mwangi, thank you for joining me. Kindly just comment on where you're watching me from and I'll be very much grateful. Oh, my 
Jacomele self quarantine at the teacher's quarter, Buyore Girls, Vihiga County. Good to see you. Mary Nyambura, Shalom. Thank you for joining me. We'll be starting the study very soon. I'm just waiting for the song to end as we wait for other people to join us in this podcast. Sabbath to you, Jaco Mille, and thank you for joining us today. I want to thank Yahweh for this wonderful morning that he has bestowed on us. I also want to thank him for the gift of life. I want to thank him for the opportunity to be given for us to even be able to meet, even online, Bible study. Even before we study, or even before we start, we start to study today. I want to claim autonomy. I don't want to say that I have the command in this particular study. Many people have done several verbal studies so far. Ever since we started on this pandemic, I've been listening to people who have been giving a lot of wisdom from above on various subjects pertaining to both the believers and even to the non-believers. Some of them have vehicled their voices in terms of the coronavirus. Others have vehicled their voices on terms of the prophetic utterance that was there before concerning this particular pandemic. And some of them, they even gone ahead and say that uh, they predicted where this country will be in few years' time. But for me, I want to focus my study today on the believers. Because the believers, they know that even after this life, there is another life after death. So before we, st- uh, we begin our study today, I want to pray for Heavenly Father so that He can guide us and the Holy Spirit will be abound in us, that the Spirit can be able to help us. Because the Spirit that helps us to understand, it is a Spirit that will promise, that will reveal to us much of the things that Yeshua had said or that He taught us. So let's believe and pray. Everlasting Father who lives in heaven, we bow ourselves before thy prize at this wonderful morning. Thank you, Daddy, for this grace. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of good health. Thank you, even Master, for giving us this particular opportunity to be able to communicate with one another. I want to believe that, my Redeemer Father, that this is the reason for this season. I want to exalt your holy name because, Father, you are worthy, because, that you are able. I magnify and glorify that name that is above all other names, the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, the Prince of Peace and our King. This wonderful morning, Daddy, as we begin our Bible study, pertaining the first fruit, how we the Spirit to help us, that may you shower me with the gift and the spirit of understanding. Give me the spirit of wisdom, spirit of utterance. Let your spirit be in me. Speak to your people who are listening this wonderful morning. I don't know what they need to listen. I don't have the words that can convince them that daddy, you died and you resurrected on their behalf. But one thing I ask of you, 
because your spirit is everywhere. May you communicate unto them. May you speak unto them this wonderful morning through me in the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah. I present myself before you as a vessel that you may use me to the glory and honor of your holy name. And even to that listener and that person who is watching me today, that person who has not accepted you as the personal savior, I pray that at the end of this Bible study, the person will be convicted and convinced that daddy, you brought your son and you presented him to die so that we can be saved. We love you. We bless you. Anything that you may have done, my Redeemer, Father, because we are sinner before thy presence, Father, we ask and seek for your forgiveness. Cleanse us and sanctify us this morning. As we begin this Bible study, we want to begin with you and end with you. In Yeshua's holy name, I pray and give thanks. Amen. Thank you, my Bishop, uh, Peter Kehara, for joining me this wonderful morning. My topic today is in the Feast of fast food. Messianic worldwide, they believe that today they are now in the feast of a living bread. I don't want to fight anybody because there are people who don't believe in the feast. There are people who keep the feast without knowing why they are keeping it. And there are those people who are keeping the feast because to them they feel that there is a reason for them to keep it. They are well convinced. My, pas my purpose of this particular study today it is not to fight those who don't keep. Neither am I here because of those who keep alone. But I am here for everybody who is yearning to know the truth. Because it is the truth that shall set us free. And among all the feasts that Yahweh has given, I want to speak on one particular feast, which you call the feast of the first fruit. The reason why I want to focus on this particular feast is because all the other feasts may have because the Bible says that the feasts are shadow of things to come. There are feasts that have already been fulfilled, and there are others that have not yet been fulfilled. There are other feasts that have been fulfilled partially, and we are waiting for the full fulfillment of this particular feast. But in today's study, I want us to focus on the feast of the first fruit. And I want to say this, for those who are following, that every particular feast... It has a past, which is a historic aspect. It has a prophetic aspect. And it has a personal aspect. So for those who believe in the historic aspect, they say and claim that the feast ended because they were part of the history. Those who believe in the prophetic aspect, then to them they know that this particular feast are yet to come. And the others who know that part of the feast has already been fulfilled. But today, I want us to look on all those aspects, the history part, the prophetic aspect, and also the personal aspect. What is the significance of this feast to the believers who are living currently? And that is you and me. And therefore, without wasting much of the time, I want us to dwell in the book of uh, Leviticus 23, verse 10 and 11. I'll be paraphrasing most of these passages, but if you'd love to have your own Bible study, I can give you the scripture later on so that you can go and do your own Bible study. I'm reading from your Yikra or Leviticus 23, and I start from verse 10 and 11. And my Bible says that, um, Tell the people of Israel, after you enter the land that I'm giving you, and harvest its ripe crops, you are to bring a sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest mm -hmm. to the Kohen. He is to wave the sheaf before Adonai so that you will be accepted. The Kohen is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat. That is translation from the complete Jewish uh, Bible. I'm giving my introduction by saying this. That... Uh, the children of Israel, they were told that once you go to reap the harvest, you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest unto the priest. And you shall wave before Yahweh to be accepted for you on the day after the Sabbath. I want to say this to all believers countrywide. 
that we are so lucky and I want to bless Yahweh that I'm coming to you for such a time as like this. Because this week coincides exactly with the week that happened 2,020 years ago when Yeshua died. The exact time he died, it is the same time we have in this particular week. That he died at the middle of the week, which was on a Wednesday. And resurrected on the first day of the week, which is on a Sunday, which we are on today. And therefore, this particular day, this Sunday, was the first day that Yeshua resurrected as the first fruit. And therefore, as you follow me in this particular study, then I want to let you know that it is good to understand that this week coincides with the week that Yeshua uh, was killed. The Bible says that bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain of your harvest. He is to wave the sheaf before Yahweh, so it will be accepted on your behalf on the day after the Sabbath. Sabbath was yesterday, and today is on a Sunday. That means that the priest was to wave the sheaf on a Sunday, the day after the Sabbath. I'll be talking to you about the significance of this particular day because from today we'll be starting the count to Pentecost. And I will let you know because the people were saying that they started on Thursday, which is on the 15th of Abbey. I will bring to your attention why that particular count will not be able to resonate with the mind of Yahweh. As the Feast of Unleavened Bread pictures Yeshua's death and burial. So the Feast of Fast Fruit, it pictures and foretells his resurrection. What is meant by this particular fast fruit? Uh, historically, in the Palestine main harvest, the main harvest for the Palestine happens during the seventh Jewish month or during the Feast of Tabernacle. That is between uh, September and October in the Gregorian calendar, which we are using currently. So there was one person who was driving through uh, the beautiful weeds in Jordan. And then he saw the stalks of wheat standing high above the main harvest. And he asked one of the local people the reason for that. And he explained to him that uh, that was the wheat that matured before the main harvest. It was the first fruit. It was planted with the rest, but grew and became ripe and matured in the springtime ahead of the main harvest, which came later. So up to until around AD 70, I think, when the temple was destroyed, this early wood would be plucked and corrected into a sheaf and then presented at the temple before Yahweh as a first fruit. And then the priest will take the sheaf offering and then wave it before Yahweh, before the people are given permission to take of the particular fruit. That's when I came to, an, uh, to my understanding about the importance of this particular day. And I will be breaking my study in terms of all. Number one, I want to start from Paul. Paul claimed to be the first fruit. I remember Paul spoke of himself as one born out of due season in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 8. He saw himself as the first fruit of the main harvest of the Jewish people who will be saved when Yeshua appears in the second time. Where do I get this one? If you read Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 11. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 11. The Bible says that, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mount for him as one mounteth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his first boy. So Paul is claiming that uh, he's seeing himself as one born out of due time, meaning the one born out of the wrong time. Because you remember Paul was the one persecuting the believers. And then his transformation to become the very people he was persecuted, even them whom he was persecuting, 
whom he told them and con and, and, uh, and claimed to be one of them, actually, they did not believe him. Follow me. I want to release some revelation here. So Paul saw himself as the first fruit of the main harvest of the Jewish people who would be saved when Yeshua appeared the second time. That was what we read from the book of Zechariah chapter 12. First fruits are like that. They are, uh, they are a harvest that matures out of a season. The weather pattern in Israel produced this strange phenomenon. Many of the crops produce a small harvest in spring. The normal season for harvest is summer or the fall month. And this small harvest out of season is called the first fruit. It is what develops before as we wait for the main term. Joba Mokelo, thank you. you. Can tell me where you are watching us from. So Yeshua is presented as the first fruit. Do you remember Yeshua said in the book of John chapter 12 verse 24? That verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground, and it dies, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. This is a mystery. That that particular corn, if you want more fruit, it has to be buried on the ground. That burying of the ground means that it will bring forth much fruit. The purpose of planting a sack of rice on seed in the ground is to see it multiply into millions of other seeds. Or ten After the seed dies, sorry, the one who is calling, please, uh, you can stop calling. Uh, sorry for that interruption. Uh, we are going back. The purpose of planting a sack of rice or seed into the ground is for it to be able to mature and bring forth much of the fruit. After the seed dies, there is a resurrection, but some of the seeds yielded 30 times as much as been planted, some of them yielded 60 times as much as been planted, and some of them yielded 100 times as much as has been planted. That is in the book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 8. In his death and burial, Yeshua was planted as a seed. Not only would Yeshua rise from the dead, but a first fruit of the main resurrection to come in the last days. That one you read in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 20 uh, from verse 4 uh, to 6. And the Bible says that, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yeshua, and for the word of Elohim, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead, all in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Messiah a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On March, on such, sorry, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of Elohim and of Messiah, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now listen to this particular word. Isaiah prophesied in the person of Yeshua concerning his resurrection. And he said in Isaiah 26 verse 19, that uh, your dead shall live, neither your dead shall live, together with my dead body they shall arise. Listen, when he died, Yeshua descended into the hell, or the heads, and opened the prison doors and released multitudes who were in the captivity of death. The Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That is a prophecy that Yeshua was giving about himself in Matthew 12 and verse 40. When people claimed that they wanted a miracle, he told them that you are a wicked generation. And there is no sign that will be given apart from the one of Jonah. That just as Jonah was in the whale stomach 
for three days and three nights. So shall the Son of Man be. On the earth. For three days and three nights. He descended to the lower earthly regions. And he said that I will free your prisoner from the waterless pit. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. And break their head in sunder. But he has broken down the gates of of breast. Praise the name of Yahweh. I'm giving a paraphrase uh, from the book of Matthew, those who are joining us now. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. I've also given a paraphrase from the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 9. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. And the one I'm finishing with in the book of Psalms 107, verse 14 and 16. If I'm too fast, you tell me to go slow. And I reduce my pace. Uh, that one I've just read from the NIV and from the King James Version. Those are the versions I'm using currently. But do you remember his promise? After three days, I will rise again. That is in Matthew 27 and verse 63. This is a, a prophetic about Yeshua giving. A prophet about himself. Uh, he said that uh, after three days, I will rise again will swallow up death in victory. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now it is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Elohim, and they that hear shall live. Oh, wonderful. This Bible talks very clearly that Matthew records the fulfillment of these amazing prophecies. And he said this, at that moment, which moment? That moment of Yeshua's death, when he will be buried, that particular death, the curtain of the temple was torn in two form, from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks There is a mystery why the curtain was cut from top to bottom and not from the bottom to top. It means that there was another power, a high power that came from above that has to tear the curtain from top to bottom. What does it tell us? The tomb broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. I'm reading the book of Matthew 27, verse 51, all the way to 53. And I'm using an NIV version at the moment. They came out of the tomb, and after Yeshua's resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Praise the name of Yahweh. This is a very good dramatic scene, if you can say so. That when Yeshua descended to the tomb, not only did he resurrect alone, but all the people who had died before him, they were seen moving around after his resurrection. As the tomb shook, he shook the hell and took away the key that Satan had gone with. This describes the first fruit of the resurrection. When Yeshua invaded hell, or when he went to hell, or what we can say, uh, the praise of the dead. The bodies of many holy people experience the magnifying resurrection of the power of Yahweh. These were, the, uh, these were the, like the sheaf of wheat that matured out of season. Why am I saying out of season? Because every person who died is supposed to wait for the final resurrection. That is when Yeshua would come. But we see here, there are people who resurrected out of season. Meaning that they resurrected before their time. Mm -hmm. They came back to life and they had died. These stalks of wheat were waved in worship and triumphant praise before Yahweh in the temple's first fruit offering to Yahweh. These were raised long before the main harvest. 
this first fruit give a powerful prophetic forecast to the certainty of the great or the May resurrection harvest that is coming in these last days. And this word describes that last great resurrection or the harvest. Let me give a paraphrase from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. And 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, Paul describes this kind of resurrection. I will, ta uh, I will take just a, a small verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. Let me start with 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. And my version says that, uh, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Elohim, and the dead, listen, and the dead in Messiah shall be resurrected first. The dead in Messiah shall be resurrected first. And First Corinthians says that uh, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised imperishable. Praise the name of Yahweh. We were giving, I'm trying to give a scenario that when Yeshua descended to hell, as he had prophesied that he was going to take three days and three nights in the tomb. During his resurrection, he came up with so much great power that even those who are believers who had died before him resurrected with him. They joined him as the first fruit of them that are dead. And that's why we are saying that Yeshua is the first fruit of them who are dead. I want to give another scenario that is about Yeshua as the first fruit. There is another thing that is a mystery about the Joseph's bone. How many of us have read the story of Joseph and wondered about at his strange request? Because if you read Genesis chapter 50, verse 24 and 25, Joseph said, and Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying. And Elohim will surely visit you. And you shall carry up my bones from here. And so Joseph died in verse 25. And they, uh, and they embarked him. And he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Now listen to this. Some 300 years later, in Moses' time now, we read in Exodus chapter 13 and verse 19. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 19. I'm reading from a New King James Version. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath, saying, Yahweh will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. Why did Joseph want his bones carried back to the promised land from Egypt? Some have conjectured or they have argued that Joseph was a prophet. He foresaw the coming events some 18 centuries in the future. Joseph foresaw the Messiah coming and his triumph over death. Raising many from the grave. This is what Joseph was foreseeing before. And Joseph wanted to be buried there in the promised land so that he would be raised as part of the first fruit. Praise the name of Yahweh. I think it is possible that because of the prophetic spirit that was there upon Joseph, remember, there was a prophetic prophecy that was given by Jacob upon Joseph. So the understanding... Uh, so he understood, Joseph understood something about Yahweh's purpose for fast fruit. And Joseph wanted to be part of the fast fruit resurrection. Or what do you think? That is something that I want you to go and think about. Why Joseph wanted his bones to be carried together with the Israel as they were going from Egypt to the promised land. Number four. 
I want to now reveal something about the mystery of being sown as a seed. In John 12 verse 24, Yeshua said that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Yeshua was actually talking about himself. This was a prophecy that was given concerning himself. He was explaining to his disciples why he had to go to the cross to die and be buried. It was that he might be sown as a seed. In his election, the seed would yield a harvest of fruit like himself. You know, Yeshua is described as the first fruit. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20, the Bible says that, uh, but Messiah has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. The first fruit we've said that it is the early harvest that witnessed to the later harvest of the same fruit. If you read with me in the book of James chapter 5 and verse 7, I want to paraphrase and say that uh, be patient therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer who is Yahweh waits for the precious fruits of the earth. So what Yeshua was telling them, for you to be able to see the first fruit, for you to be able to yield the fruit, I must die first and resurrect. Because my resurrection is what will give you people power. My resurrection is what will give you an energy to preach. My resurrection is what will give you the force that will drive you forward. I hope you are getting something from this study. We are just doing some uh, Bible study. I want to mention about first fruit of Messiah. Uh, as unleavened bread speaks of our fleeing in haste from the practice of sin. Now this first fruit speaks of those first signs of Messiah's character in us. It speaks about Christ-likeness in us. Before uh, our Passover, there was no Christ-likeness in us. There was no character of Messiah in us at all. And this one I'm speaking authoritatively. There was no character of Messiah in us prior to the Passover. After our Passover, there may be little character after the Passover in terms of our behavior. Until we move into their living bread and fast food is when our character changes. And I want to mention about these particular changes that we are going to get as the first fruit of Messiah. Number one, it is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. These fruits of Messiah are actually described in that book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 23. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All these are actually there in the book of Galatians. It means that Yeshua was teaching us that, uh, that those particular fruits can only be seen, can only be evidenced. People can only be able to see this particular fruit. All our character can change so that we can people who will be having peace, people who will have joy, people who will have patience, people who will have kindness, people who will have goodness. Faithful people, gentleness and self-control can only be the fruit that will be evidence upon our life after he has died and resurrected. Meaning that before he resurrected, all these fruits will not be evident upon our life. There is something else that he said in the book of uh, John chapter 15. 
And he taught us that uh, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruits by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruits unless you remain in me. Who? He's speaking to us. We cannot bear fruits, not unless we remain in him. He continues to say, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruits. Apart from me, you can do absolutely nothing. That is the Messiah speaking unto us. Meaning that uh, without him, there is nothing, my brother, you can do. If you are not in him, my sister, there is nothing that you can do. Ideally, I want just to put it uh, in plain language. Without him, you cannot survive. We are here surviving because of him. We are showing much fruits because we are in him. Because if we are not in him, there is nothing that we can do on our own. Praise the name of Yahweh. And I want to proceed and say that, uh, he proceeded and to say that, uh, this is my father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Meaning that uh, our character will depict the character of Yeshua. Our behavior will be matching with his behavior. What we shall be doing, the kind of life that we shall be living, will exactly be the life and will portray the Messiah that lives in us. Brethren, I want to ask yourself, has Yeshua been raised in you? Has Yeshua resurrected in you? Have you experienced the feast of fast fruit in you? Have you experienced the power, the resurrection power of Yahweh in you. He said this in verse 14. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. You are my friend if you do what I command you. Mm -hmm. So the first fruit are those signs of the fruits of the spirit. They are recognized by practical loving actions or behaviors on behalf of Messiah and his church. As a living bread takes out, out of sin through death and burial, fast fruit takes us into love through resurrection and life. I want to repeat that one. Just as a living bread, which is actually a feast that we are in, it takes out, out of sin through death and burial. Then likewise, this fast fruit, it takes us into love through the resurrection and life. First John 3.14 says, We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Listen. Yahweh wants us to move on from now the living bread into the love of the first fruit. And you cannot do this if you've not experienced the resurrecting power. The resurrecting power of Yahweh was evident when Yeshua resurrected. Mm -hmm. That coming to life, his death and his resurrection, his death and his resurrection is what gives us confidence and hope that even if we die, we shall reign again. That was number one. Number two, let me speak about renewal in his likeness. Renewal in his likeness. Too often, or I can say that most often, our desire to leave sin behind becomes self-righteousness. We develop an unloving, you know, judgmental attitude. Yahweh calls us on 
after uh, purging out the leaven of malice and wickedness into the positive loving action of the first fruit. When we experience the first fruit, the likeness of Yeshua is being formed in us. In spirit, we are already like him. For we have received his spirit into our hearts through faith, and we have been born again as sons of our father. Nyamasega Jeremiah, welcome my colleague. Let me say this. The man, and in this particular case I'm not talking about the gender, I'm talking about both male and female. The man is a spirit which is possessing a soul contained in a body. That means that man is three in one. We are spirit, that is the likeness of Yahweh. And that spirit is possessing a soul. And the soul composed of what is between our ears, the brain and the mind. That is what the soul. That enables us to think critical, that is the soul. And then the soul and the spirit is now possessing or is being contained in a physical body. Nyamasege from Kilifi, thank you for joining us. Enoch Kenagol, thank you for watching. You can tell me where you're watching from and I'll be very much grateful. Now we are talking about his likeness. I'm saying that we experience fast fruit, the likeness of Yeshua being formed in us. That means that in spirit we are already like him. So in soul, which is now composed of uh, the affection, the will and the intellect, and I've said that it is in between our ears. <coughs> Excuse me. We are being renewed and fashioned in his likeness as we submit to the lordship of the spirit in our lives. I want you to look that one in the Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Let's go there. If you're joining me now, uh, we are actually talking about the first fruit. We are looking at the significance, having looked at, uh, we are looking at uh, the historic aspect, the prophetic aspect, and also the personal aspect of it upon uh, our lives. Let's go to the book of Romans uh, chapter 12 and verse 2. That's what we are. We want to bring in board those people who are joining us. Pastor Jackson Kimani, following us from Gilgil, you're welcome. We are tackling Yeshua as our first fruit. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and say that, uh, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. That is now the second part of what is called the soul. The affection, the will, and the intellect. How you think is supposed to think according to Messiah. The way you reason is supposed to reason according to him. Your will is supposed to be connected to him. You become one like him. You are renewed in his likeness. And remember, this is the consequences of the first fruit. This is the consequences of being part and parcel of his resurrection. Now, we've talked about being in his likeness in spirit and in soul. Number three, in body. We will be like him at the last great harvest resurrection in the end of the church. And uh, I want to give a paraphrase here also of First Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, verse 51, verse 52, and verse 49. Peter and Joe Gundongo, Jute Kaz, Jute, thank you for joining us. Please tell us where you're watching us from. That is my colleague at Hopewell High School, Peter and Jogo, my friend, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. If you're just going, we are reading the book of First Corinthians, chapter 15, uh, verse 51, verse 52, and verse 49. And I want to say this that, uh, I'm saying that uh, in body we'll be like him in the great harvest that is supposed to come at the end of the church age. How do we know this? Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all asleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. 
for the trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. And just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. Hallelujah. Would that day be wonderful? I am looking forward to that particular day. We will be having that particular great day where our body now will be conformed to his likeness. Remember, and I want to bring to your attention, when Yeshua resurrected, he came up. He came up with another body that was not having flesh. You take us from Kisi, Pitanjogu, watching from Nakuru. Thank you very much, my friend. You are most welcome. When he's, uh, before he died, he had a physical body just like we have. But when he's, uh, he resurrected, he was able to pass in through the walls because he had a spiritual body. A spiritual body knows no boundary. A spiritual body no knows wall. He could just come in in a house that all the doors had been closed. And he comes in and the disciples could see him. And one instance happened. When he came to the disciple. And Thomas was not there. And Thomas told his colleagues that I cannot believe that Messiah died or all his resurrected. Not unless I see him touch him and put my finger in those particular holes to confirm that his disciples had already doubted when they saw him and he told them come on my friend and you know that it is me so they, when they touched him it was actually a physical body but when they tried to think how this man came into the house understood. Why? Because his body has already been transformed. He had become the first fruit of them. That As we all believe that when we die, there is a time that we are going to resurrect and be with him. But Yeshua has already died and he has resurrected. He is giving us an assurance that when we die, we will also resurrect. Hallelujah. And we will be like him. Just like he became all he came back with a spiritual body. Even our body will be transformed to spiritual body. A body that will have no boundary. A body that cannot be contained in this world. A body that is not prone to sin. Because it is not flesh and blood. Because remember, when he died on the cross. When he was nailed on the cross. They drained all the blood. They drained all the water out of him because we needed that blood for redemption. Now, after that particular redemption, then that particular body that was buried did not have blood in it. And it is the flesh and blood that is making us to sin. So he came up with a new body, a spiritual being, a more powerful being. That was not there before. But for now, enter into experience of fast food. I want to finish with this book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22 to 24. And the Bible says that, uh, Clothe yourself with our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. And do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. This is a calling that is given unto us. Draw off your old evil nature. The old you that was a partner in your evil ways. Rotten through and through. Full of lust and shame. Know your attitude and thoughts must all be constantly changing for the better. I'm reading from the TLB a version here. Yes, you must be a new and different person, holy and good. Clothe yourself with this new nature. Brethren, 2,000 years and 20 years ago, the Messiah died for our sin. His death 
redeems us from sin. His resurrection gave us the power that we are going to show forth the fruit. His resurrection is the only assurance that we have as believers that we are only here for a season. There is a time that we are going to resurrect. There is a time that we are looking forward. Had he not resurrected, then our hope and our faith will be in vain. Had he not come out from the tomb like he promised, then our hope will be in vain. We are here declaring that our Messiah died and resurrected. That resurrection power is what we are celebrating in this feast of first fruit. The priest would wave the sheaf offering. Denny Mutunga from Kirinyaga, thank you for joining us. When the priest was weaving it, he was telling the children of Israel that what is to come during the fall, you are allowed to partake of it. From this particular day, my brethren, and I will be talking about it tomorrow, this is where we start counting 50 days to Pentecost. This is what now gives an assurance because before then there was no Holy Spirit. But after he resurrected, he told his disciples that I have to go so that the helper can come. It is the helper that will help us. It is the Holy Spirit that he was promising. And that Holy Spirit is the one that when he descended on disciples, during Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, 3,000 souls were saved. All the disciples that were in the upper room, 120 men, they were able to receive the Holy Spirit. They were now the fruits of the Holy Spirit that were evidence after Yeshua's death. We are all part and parcel of that resurrection. Only if we've taken part in his death and in his resurrection. This day, that's what I said in the beginning. It is one of the important days to those people who are believers because it's the one that confirms what you've been preaching all about. It is what now that is able to stamp and be able to put a seal that these people, whatever they are preaching, is the truth. If Yeshua had not resurrected like he told the disciples, then he would have called himself a liar. And he is not a liar. Duncan Ouma Jabuya from Nairobi, you are locked in. It is only for a season. I want to say this as I conclude my study today. And we look forward to tomorrow. Well, we'll be looking about the significance of this particular day as we count days to Pentecost. I want to say this. If you die in Yeshua, if you are circumcised in the spirit, what we call through water baptism, then you are so sure that you died with him. And just like you are put in water and then you are brought up outward from the water. It depicts that you die with him and you also resurrected with him. That resurrection is what we celebrate in this feast of fast fruit. This day is showing us that Yeshua died and resurrected. And for us, we've died and we are going to resurrect with him. May I bless you. May I keep him. Uh, John Jog, we are telling that don't forget to share the time you'll be live tomorrow kindly. I'll be able to tell you when because tomorrow, uh, sorry, tomorrow I'll be, I'll be live trying to talk all about uh, the count to the Feast of Pentecost because uh, there are so many believers, uh, especially the Messianic, who have, who have a problem. There is actually a contention issue uh, that says where are we supposed to start counting? Because we've actually learned that uh, the counting of Pentecost, uh, uh, the wave was supposed to be, uh, to be waved the second day after Sabbath. And now the problem is, we don't, uh, most of us don't know which Sabbath is it talking about. Is it the first day of the unleavened bread, which is a high day Sabbath? Or is it the weekly Sabbath, which has actually been talked about? 
So that is what we are going, uh, I'll be able by the grace of Yahweh to be able to do it. For those people who are taking, uh, who are, who've been asking me, why am I not live? Why am I not being seen? Uh, I want to say that uh, now the grace is sufficient. And sometimes you have to listen. And as I end this broadcast, I want to applaud all the servants of Yahweh who have been doing a good job. Pastor Jackson Kiman from Giki has always been live. We've been seeing you. My dad, Pastor Stephen Nganga, he has also been live. We've been seeing him. Uh, Pastor Gedenji Nganga, we've also been seeing him. Paul uh, from Mount Zion, mm -hmm. Uthiri, together with your team, you are doing a commendable job. My bishop, Peter Gedenji Kihara, he has been doing a wonderful job. Brother Makoha, I cannot fail to mention you because of what you've been posting for us. You're doing a wonderful job. And all the other servants from all works, from all church, including my mentor, the founder of Truth Mentorship Society, uh, Pastor Anton Kahura Mwangi, you're doing a wonderful job. And all those people who are trying in all particular places, I listen to people who are not only messianic, I listen to the Christian people. Because basically, this truth can come to you in any way. I'm one person who is a very fond, and I have people who I call my mentor when it comes to the spiritual, who are not messianic like me. I be listened to Archbishop <coughs> of CFF, Harrison K. Ngang. I listened to Apostle William. I listened to Apostle Juma. I listened um, to Bishop J.B. Masinde of uh, uh, the Riverlands Church of Moda. Uh, I listened to Bishop Alan Kuna. I listened to all these particular people. I listened to T.G. Dex. As long as whatever these people are teaching is the truth, what I need is the truth. And filter in what is good for me. And I want to urge you, the one who is listening to me today, I'm not clear on this particular subject. I'm not saying that I know much. I'm only sharing the literal revelation that I have concerning this particular scripture. You are also allowed to give your own views. You are also allowed to do your own Bible study because revelation is new every day. You can get a revelation today. I can teach a scripture today and then tomorrow you can come with a new revelation that speaks something different. And for me, I am more than ready to accept mm -hmm. and receive that particular revelation because it is what I need to move on. I'm not yet there. I'm looking forward to get that eternal life. And for you, I want to believe that we are all in the works of life. I cannot pass judgment. Whether you fellowship on Sunday, whether you fellowship on Saturday, whether you fellowship on Friday, or whichever day that you fellowship, one thing that I know that all of us, we have one common goal and one purpose. We are all looking forward to be given eternal life. And every person who is looking forward to that particular day, I want to believe that what you are looking for, our Elohim is so sure. He is the truth. And his promises are yes and amen. He will give us just as his promise. I want us to end this broadcast by prayer. Everlasting Father, I want to bless you and I want to worship you. Thank you, Daddy, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Daddy, for your endless support and strength to move on. Even in this particular pandemic, my Redeemer Father, I want to pray for all those people who have been watching, every person who has listened to my voice today, that Father, you will bless them, you will elevate them, you will guide them, and you will protect them so that they can be able to see and to be alive in the land of the living. I bless you, my Redeemer Father, for the time that we've shared, and I want to believe that, my Redeemer Father, I've only done that one as a humble person. Daddy, I pray that you lose me as a vessel. Even as I speak this particular word, I'm only communicating what you've given unto me. I'm only a vessel that you can speak to your people. That word that has gone to these particular people, may you give them power. May you give it strength. May it bring a renewal in their life in the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah. We believe that you died and resurrected for us. Even as we celebrate this resurrection today, we know that you've resurrected in your lives. We've given us a new purpose. You've given us a new sense of responsibility. What we do, the way we think, the way we reason, and what we do today, let it resonate 
according to your son who is Yeshua. Father, we bless you, we worship you, and we magnify your holy name. Continue to lead us, continue to guide us. In Yeshua's holy name, we pray and believe. Amen and amen. I want to end you there. If you have any comment, if you have any question, please don't fail to write it there. You can also uh, follow me so that every time I bring a podcast, you can be able to listen. Otherwise, for me, for today, I'm very much grateful for all those people who have sacrificed their time to listen to me. May I bless you. May I keep you. May I let his face shine upon you. May I give you peace that abounds as above everything. Shalom.